All right, so everything that we thought was going to happen happened, and now we have the price. So let's talk about it on your boot sequence. Nvidia just released their 40 series of GPUs, and just as predicted, we got 14090 and 2480s, a 16 gigabyte version and a 12 gigabyte version with a little less CUDA cores. Here, I'll put the specs on the screen because quite honestly, they don't matter that much. You got your flagship 4090 up at the top for 1599, the 4080 16 gigabytes for 1199, and the 4080 12 gig for 899 or at least these are the starting at prices. So let's talk about those prices. Honestly, I'm a little disappointed, maybe confused, kind of fine with it, disturbed, and dare I say, a little frazzled. Let's start with the 4090. I think it sort of kind of makes sense at that price. So the 3090 released at a whopping 14.99 in 2020. Technically, adjusted for inflation, we're at 15.90, so I guess it's priced okay. Performance-wise, Nvidia says it's up to two times faster than the previous generation when it comes to rasterized performance, and if we're talking about ray tracing, it's two to four times faster. Jensen even added that you can really push the ADA architecture, saying that they've actually got it to be overclocked past three gigahertz in their labs. Hopefully, he's not talking about LN2 overclocking. So yeah, with that, I'd say 1599 makes sense. Now, if we look at the 4080s, Boy, does my opinion change real quick. So the 16 gigabyte 4080 has 9,728 CUDA cores. That's a decrease of 40%. Yet the $1,200 price tag is just a decrease of 25% over the 4090. So the 4090 is better in price to performance or at least price to CUDA cores. Like what is happening here? I thought flagship GPUs were supposed to be expensive and not worth it. At least that's the track record for Nvidia. And the same thing is true about the 4070, sorry, the 4080 12 gig. It's 900 bucks, but it has less than half the CUDA cores of the 4090. So once again, compared to the 4090's 1599 price tag, the 4090 has more bang for your buck. That's crazy. So what they're saying is in terms of price per CUDA cores, the 4090 is the best option, the 4080 12 gig is the second best, and the 4080 16 gig would be the third one. I know I'm just doing some quick maths, but it's just not usually the case with Nvidia. And in terms of talks of performance, all we got from Nvidia is two to four times faster, and of course, a couple of charts. What was even more interesting during the presentation, at least according to me, is the evolution of DLSS for this new series of GPUs. Use. While DLSS 2.0 created pixels out of thin air, DLSS 3.0 will literally build new frames out of thin air. It's actually pretty interesting how they do it. They take all of the game engine's motion vector data, plus data from their new optical flow accelerator, and boom, new frame generated. That new optical flow accelerator is what prevents things that don't have motion vector data, like, I don't know, uh, shadows, to look weird and ghosty. They showed some demos of it with Cyberpunk 2077 and Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I'm not gonna lie, it's actually noticeable. Like, you can clearly see that faraway objects like windows are a little bit squiggly and not as square, and that contrast or sharpness is sometimes a little bit over the top, but that's when paused and zoomed in. You you wouldn't really notice that while playing the actual game. Heck, in the flight sim demo, the DLSS 3.0 version is able to resolve more details than the native frames. Look at the bridge here and the wires. It's wild, it's way clearer on the DLSS side. The thing is with DLSS 3.0 that only 35 games have planned support so far. And if we learned anything from Nvidia is that planned support for games doesn't mean it will actually happen. A lot of games that uh, promised DLSS or ray tracing support with the 2000 series, we're talking four years ago, well, some of these games still don't have either features available. So yeah, the RTX 40 series also has a next generation encoder with dual AV1 encoding. What's actually really cool about it is that you can either make uh, each encoder work on different tasks, or you can pair them up on the same workload for accelerated or faster encoding. Hopefully, the rest of the NVENC encoder is also faster and higher quality. Honestly, 
this launch got me a little depressed. The prices are really high for an 80 series GPU, even for an 80 series that was supposed to be a 70 series. Nvidia really wanted or needed a way to keep selling their RTX 3000 series at the same price as before, and it looks like they found it. I mean, I would still expect the prices of the uh, RTX 3000 series to probably go down, especially during Black Friday, so it's probably gonna be the best time to buy a GPU. Anyways, even though I'd love to test out all of the new features, as a budget conscious person, person, I just can't justify the super high prices. There won't be enough games that support all of the new stuff, and quite honestly, I don't want to support Nvidia for things they've done in the past and this kind of practice. I guess we'll have to wait for November 3rd to see what AMD has to offer, because they just announced their event for that date. So what do you guys think about all this? What did you think about the event? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about, uh, I don't know, Jensen, was he real in this presentation? Was he? Who knows? Click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.